Most of you have never seen a car quite like this before. It looks like a touring car, but you're going to find out in a minute it's not. It in fact is a 1918 Kissel Stagger Door Sedan slash Touring. And we're going to explain why we say that. And you're going to learn about a very unique, extremely rare automobile in this video. Even if you've seen our couple of other videos that show it, stay tuned for interesting information. Here is why the car is actually called a Stagger Door Sedan. This is a factory photograph of an original Stagger Door Sedan by the Kissel Motor Car Company. Here are some advertisements showing you it is the all-year car. This is a patented invention by Kissel that they patented, of all things, after they made the car by a couple of years. But what is possible with this car is it came with a full sedan top for it that attached in such a way that the car looked like it was one car built as a sedan. But all of the summer items were taken off of it and can be removed off of it and put the sedan top on it. Now we've owned this car for 32 years and never did find the original sedan top. It could be easily recreated. Yes, it'd be some work utilizing the Kissel patents and the car for measurements. Built within the car the lower portion that is here is every single special fitting and feature that actually allows the attachment of the all-year top. What you're looking at is the car as it is completed now, which is the summer version of the car. Everything that's been done on the car is the way Kissel did it, which means that there are some very unique features with this car, including the steering wheel, which in this case is not quite round because that happened to be the way the steering wheel was that we had with the car, so it's been reproduced that way. It's virtually round, but it's deliberately segmented. Also, you see that it uses linoleum on the floor. This is what we found to be original with it. And the interior is patterned exactly off of the original interior that was received when we recovered the rear portion of the car and the front seats. Those front seats are on sliders, which is another unique thing about the Kissel all-year car system. Because you have the staggered doors, you need a way to actually move the door, pardon me, move the seat back so you can get in the front door. And so Kissel came up with staggered seating with sliding seats. Right there you see a turn signal indicator that we added to the car, it flips up out of the way. The turn signal indicator is of course not original and we didn't want it to show if we were displaying the car. That particular item, as I said, flips up out of the way. The actual emblems in the doors are the way Kissel made the car. The little brass emblem on the front of the seat is the way Kissel had it. Those seats, you have little black handles on the sides, you can move them, as we said, and position them in multiple positions. All of the black belt trim on the top of the bottom of the car there, all of it is removable. You take that off, you take the windshield off, you take the rear top section off, and that is how you mount the sedan body onto the car, and everything has hidden fasteners when you're done. Every one of those special fasteners is actually in the car. In essence, this is effectively two cars in one. If somebody builds a winter trap, they have two cars in one. This is the only known surviving stagger door sedan in the world. There is only one other all-year car known, and that is a sedan net. And that is owned by a gentleman in Michigan. That car is a shorter body, it is not a staggered door sedan, and they are the only two surviving all-year cars. Remember, this is the only staggered door sedan that survives. It is also actually a seven-passenger car. As we are showing you throughout the video here, you'll see on the backs of the seats there are handles. Those handles operate jump seats they fold out. You could easily set adults on those seats, although I would strongly suggest kids might be more comfortable. Theoretically, seven people can then ride in the car. 
The reason there are exterior door handles on the car when you wouldn't normally have those on a Touring at the time is because if you put the sedan top on, how are you going to open the doors without exterior door handles? Furthermore, each one of the positions along the side of the car has special tracks milled in the wood where the windows for the winter top would slide down and they lifted up on leather straps just like they would in an old train car. That happened to be how they provide ventilation if it was warm and you had the winter top up or on the car. When you look throughout the car here, as I said, everything is patterned the way Kissel did it as to how the uh, upholstery was done. Each little piece, the brakes and the pieces, etc., were done just the way they did them. Looking at the front of the car, you have a real Kissel radiator on there. It has not been replaced with a modern radiator. That radiator is a true honeycomb radiator. On the very front of the car, you see two lower lights. Those are actually additions so that there is a signal light system, as we said on the car. They're period correct for when the car was built. The car has a Kissel motometer and a Kissel Every Inch a Car emblem on it. The Every Inch a Car for Kissel Car was in the use in 1918. They started using the Kissel name in 1918 thinking that with World War I they really shouldn't use Kissel with car spelled as a K because of the German enemy quotes in the war. So 1918 is the only year where you could see both of them on the car and have them correct at the same time. That makes this a rather unique year for how the cars were badged after 1918. They're always known as Kissels. Prior to 1918, they're known as Kissel cars. In that year, they made a switch, as we said. The red pinstripe is located exactly where it was, measured off of the original car. When we got the front half of the car, it was extremely rusty. When we recovered the back half of the car, we found out how the car was originally painted, which it was originally painted in Kissel Blue with a gold pinstripe. We had already done the chassis and painted red wheels and figured on red wheels, black, and the silver gray color. And so we did not change it back to the original color. For your reference, in the time period Kissel was built and the way the factory brochures state, any Kissel could be painted any color you wanted for $50, which is a lot of money back then, but they'd paint it any color. You're looking at the back of the car, my favorite part, with the porthole windows. There were two different types of windows according to factory photographs that we have found for the tops. They had an oval window available. They also had the round porthole windows because we had a press at my shop capable of making the round porthole windows. We created tooling to reproduce the round porthole windows which were missing when we got the car. We think they look better than the oval window. Obviously, if you're going to drive it on the road, add some extra mirrors, it would be appropriate. You'll see an L and R there on the back by the taillight. The L and R are left and right. That is a period correct signal light that we use for the rear. And as we said, we've hidden the controls inside the vehicle so they do not show if you want to show the vehicle at a show. This vehicle will run about 45 miles per hour cruise. Kissel claims it'll go 60. I don't think I'd want to go 60 in it, but it'd be cruising beautifully at 45 miles per hour. It's a three uh, forward gear transmission, one reverse. It is, of course, non synchromish and it uses a cone clutch. However, it does uh, shift well and it operates nicely. And in just a few moments, we're going to show you the car actually running. As you see a few of the last pictures of the car, the silver or actually uh, plated holders in the back hold the top if you put the top down. Remember, this is the only, absolutely the only surviving stagger door sedan in the whole world by Kissel. <laughs>